But Hollywood, what's very interesting about them is that they are more intertwined with the government more than you think. So it may <clears throat> show a lot of videos where they speak out action against the government and trying to make a difference and all that. But you got to realize this. It's the same thing with people in educated higher university schools who speak out against news medias and yet those people will still rely and turn to the news media for their documentations. See, that's the nature of mankind. It's the same thing with people criticizing about cell phone tech technology, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and yet you suckers are still using it, and we're still using it. See, that's just the nature of mankind. See, it doesn't matter, you gotta understand this. Just because it seems like that they're preaching against something, it doesn't mean that in their living that they're not tied to it. That's something to understand. So Hollywood is more intertwined with government than you think. So there's a former C, uh, senior CIA official. His name is John Rizzo. So this man, he mentions this about CIA and Hollywood. Now, what does the Bible think about Hollywood? Oh, well, I'll tell you what God thinks about Hollywood. That's junk. That's what God thinks about Hollywood. It is garbage. What does God think about the kingdoms of this world? Well, he says worse than garbage. That's what he actually says. He says it's no more than a drop of a bucket to him. It's, it's, it's below garbage. I, that's what he actually said in one passage. So the kingdoms of this world, a.k.a. government... God don't give a flip about that either. Look, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, we are very blessed in this country, and I thank God for the privileges. I, and we should be grateful for the people who made sacrifices and the privileges that we get compared to other countries. I mean, we still got the freedom, folks, to uh, worship God and do street preaching and soul winning and all that. Thank God for that. So uh, trust me, I also want to make a difference with our country. Uh, voting and then doing uh, public policies, et cetera, et cetera. Don't get me wrong. If I had to vote, then yeah, probably. Uh, well, if it's Hillary and Trump, I'd obviously choose Trump. You know, that's a no-brainer right there. If I had to choose. But the thing is this. You got to understand it. It does not matter how much you try to make a difference with this government. You got to realize this. They can only work within their limitations. Yeah. Everything is still limited. This world is already in the palms of Satan. No matter how much effort you pull, you'll never change this country. And the greatest evidence of that is the book of Revelation. Yeah. Revelation shows all the world will be united under the Antichrist. You're not going to stop that. That's right. You're not going to stop that. You know who's going to stop that? Jesus Christ, Amen. not you. Amen. Jesus Christ will stop that at the end of the tribulation when he comes down. And then, okay, I'm going to set up my own government. <laughs> That's what he's going to do. So I'm sorry, but this is what God thinks about Hollywood and government. It's like, boom, like this. It's nothing. But they are more intertwined, more than you think, which is pretty interesting. There's this invisible line where they're intertwined. So he's a former senior CIA official, John Rizzo. And that he admitted that the agency often asked production companies to allow CIA operatives to pose as members for their crew and if a film is being shot at a, some foreign country out there. This is found at his book. You can look it up at his memoir. It's called Company Man, 30 Years of Crisis and Controversy in the CIA. He gives this quote particularly from that book. These are people who have made a lot of money basically making stuff up. A lot of them, at least the smarter and more self-aware ones, realize that what they do makes them ridiculously rich, but is, uh, but is also meaningless in the larger scheme of things. So they're receptive to helping the CIA in any way they can, probably in equal parts because they are sincerely patriotic and because it gives them a taste of real life intrigue. When Ben Affleck was doing his film Argo, you got to realize this. The Guardian, the source, The Guardian, they asked him if he thought there were any actors that were moonlighting as CIA agents. You know what Affleck said? Quote, I think there are probably quite a few. Yes, I think probably Hollywood is full of CIA agents, and we just don't know it. And I wouldn't be surprised at all to discover 
that this was extremely common. <laughs> That's what he says. Now, the article for that, he was asked by this at The Guardian, and it's actually, you can still see it on YouTube, actually, so you can watch it. The title is Ben Affleck on Argo. Probably Hollywood is full of CIA agents, November the 8th, 2012, and it's with his interview with The Guardian. Okay, so we see right here they're more intertwined than you think. Here's another uh, quotation right here. This is by uh, Arnon Milken. Now, he's the producer uh, behind the famous movies Club and Pretty Woman. He even admitted that he helped to support the apartheid regime at South Africa in exchange for what? Secretly aiding Israel to acquire uranium for their nuclear program. Wow. So where there are Jewish elites involved and etc., it's uh, very interesting and it's more uh, strange than you think. Now this can be found in the source right here. Let's see right here. It's also by The Guardian, again. The title of the article, Arnon Milkan Reveals Past as Israeli Spy by Harriet Sherwood at November the 26, 2013. Here's uh, something. If you look up J. Edgar Hoover, so we see this with CIA, but what about the FBI? Did you read about the foundation of J. Edgar Hoover? Do you know what he did? I mean, this is not even a secret, too. I mean, I think there's some movies out concerning this, but he was gaining secrets about famous, not just politicians, but even actors and actresses. I mean, a lot of people did not like this guy. They feared his power with the FBI. So, Jed, so you see intelligence agencies that were involved with finding out secrets with what people do. So this is, you got to understand this, especially with, uh, I forgot that guy's name, but the famous movie that came out concerning that, you all know his name if I mention it. I just have to look it up real quick. But then uh, he actually exposed it, and he's now stuck at Russia concerning about the NSA and then how, what's that? Snowden. Snowden, yes, Edward Snowden. Thank you. So Ed, Edward Snowden. So then concerning about that issue with technology, I mean, with, with the technology that we got today, that they're listening through every conversation and stuff that we're going through. So... This is not a surprise because this was all the way ever since the beginning. You think that they changed their minds, huh? <laughs> Let me ask you this question, okay? Let me ask you this question, okay? People uh, will call these theories and conspiracies because even though you give them a historical documentation that happened back then for real life, what they want to say is, well, that was back then. So it's not happening right now. Well, here's the thing, okay? Let's just say that this is not even proven, even though I've given you quotes directly from these people, and these are not just amateur bloggers either. These are from actual people who had uh, connections with agencies. But aside from that fact, let's just uh, even assume that all of this cannot be 100% proven. If there was a guy who raped one of your children, and then he was in prison for 10 years, you trust him when he gets out that, oh, so that was back then, he's not gonna do it again? Especially if you have that much power and freedom. Yeah, See, so here's the thing. You don't have to believe this, but at least we have the right to be suspicious. We have a full right to be suspicious and not say, oh, they're not documenting what I say. No, you better watch out. That's why some people are unwise and they get kicked out of the Internet and YouTube. You know why? You're not using your head. Yeah. Brother Robert lived with me for a while. He knows that how paranoid I can be, you know, about that one little camera thing, you know. So... So you got to realize that fact. All right, so uh, I can go on and on and on, but there's also PSYOPs. That's a common fact. That's a common fact. You can even look that up and research yourself. PSYOPs is a common thing where they put up misinformation online and set things up. Uh, but here's another thing. Even the Washington Post, yeah, even the Washington Post had to admit this. They quoted at 2007 in their article when they published an article about people who hear voices and they think they've been targeted by the government and stuff like that as part of some kind of experiment, the reporter had to admit this, quote, they may be crazy, but the Pentagon has pursued a weapon that can do just that. So this is found at the article Mind Games by Sharon Weinberger, January 14, 2007 at their Washington Post. 
So you see right here is that even the reporter had the right to be fearful and afraid, and then when Snowden came out, that just made it really worse right there. It's like, now it's like public information. So let's see right here. Uh, there's so many things I could quote right here. But here's something interesting from the former dean of the Berkeley Graduate School of Journalism. Okay, his name is Ben Bagdikian. Okay, I'm not sure if I pronounced his last name right. So uh, the title of the writing is The New Media Monopoly. The New Media Monopoly. He quotes right here. The possibilities for mutual promotion among all their various media is the basic reason the big five, so now it's six, obviously, so these would include what? Comcast, News Corporation, Time Warner, Disney, obviously, Viacom and CBS, etc., have become, uh, let me continue reading, have become major owners of all kinds of media. For example, actors and actresses in a conglomerate's wholly owned movie studio can appear on the same company's television and cable networks. Photographs of the newly minted celebrities can dominate the covers of the firm's wholly owned magazines, and those celebrities can be interviewed on the firm's wholly owned radio and television talk shows. The conglomerate can commission an author from its wholly owned book publishing firm to write a biography or excuse me, a biography or autobiography of the new stars, which in turn is promoted on the firm's other media. He also quotes, they have what? The big five, which is now six, have power that media in past history did not. Power created by new technology and the near uniformity of their political goals. It also continues reading here, quote, Technically, the dominant media firms are in are a rule of a few in which one of those few acting alone can alter market conditions. See, there is a group of quote-unquote elites or a, or a few in power who are doing things. But here's another historical fact concerning Operation Mockingbird which is from the CIA. Here's a quote right here. The Congressional Committee's report revealed, quote, the CIA currently ma maintains a network of several hundred individuals around the world who provide intelligence for the CIA and at times attempt to influence opinion through the use of covert propaganda. These individuals provide the CIA with direct access to a large number of newspapers and periodicals, scores of press services and news agencies, radio and television stations, commercial book publishers, and other foreign media outlets. And then you can look up Operation Mark Mockingbird and uh, find some more quotes and research on that one. But this is pretty interesting, is that even you, did you know about Anderson Cooper's summer job that he did? He interned with the CIA for, you got to realize it's not just one summer, but two, two <laughs> he interned while he was in college. Uh, this was obviously reported 20 years later. So then he claimed that he decided not to pursue a career with them, even though he had no training or experience. And then what happened? He soon, all of a sudden, which is really strange, he became one of the popular faces of CNN. So this is found at CNN.com, quote, My Summer Job Nearly 20 Years Ago by Anderson Cooper, September 6, 2006. So you got to realize this. I can go on and on and on, but all these big shots. So we see history over here recorded. And then we also see current events of witnesses who are not just ordinary bloggers, but actual celebrities and actual former uh, people who had connections with the agencies back then. So these people, so celebrities and former agents, they all confessed this fact. And then we also seen some scholars who quoted this fact about what? There is something more intertwined than you think. And you got to realize this, even at the Old Testament, it was a matter of fact that back then, you know what they had? They didn't have movies, but what was the foundation of movies? It was pictures. Before celebrities were called idols, the Bible, Old Testament, had idols that people worshipped. And guess what? That was part of a government system. And the Lord said, you have to destroy that government. When you Old Testament Jews go there and destroy that government, don't forget, quote-unquote, Hollywood over there as well. 
He, de- he specifically said the, uh, the, the idols were to be destroyed and the pictures. Look at Numbers chapter 33. We'll look at verse 51. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, when they enter that government, that kingdom, what are they supposed to do? Then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their what? Pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. So look at that. Their idols are destroyed as well as their pictures. Now look at Revelation 12. Truly government and Hollywood is intertwined as one. Why is that, Pastor? Because when the government executes the tribulation saints, particularly the two witnesses, the Bible says that within a three-day time span, just in a short three-day time span, the whole world looks at the dead bodies on the street. How do they do that? Didn't you know that if you looked at the Great Awakening Revival preachers who commented on that passage, before television came out, they said, we don't know how this happened, but we just have to take by faith that it can happen. Today, you don't need faith. We all have it, folks. It's media, it's Hollywood, it's Facebook, it's Hollywood, it's CNN, it's et cetera, it's internet, it's television. We all can see it. See, government and TV are intertwined together. Revelation chapter, oh, did I say 12? I meant 11, sorry. Chapter 11, and notice verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see the whole world, what? Shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. So this is during Christmas time as well. So Christmas news, breaking news on Christmas. See those bodies of the two witnesses over there. They will be on the front page. Everybody will watch it. Truly, it'll be intertwined as one. And what is God going to do with all of this? He's going to wipe them all out. Look, you are very ignorant and gullible if you think that Hollywood is against the government. No. It is a matter of fact, even in real life situations today, you can preach one thing, but your living life situation is tied to another. Here's another thing. How do you get access to military weapons when you produce movies without their permission? You have to get permission from them, and then I can give you documented quotes where a military, they give them a specific limitation on what they can publicize in their movies about them. But mostly they want something positive about them. That's what they want mostly. So they have to put specific limitations on it. If they, if they don't, uh, you got to realize this. If Hollywood never criticizes uh, the military or the government, you got to realize this. Then it's not, then it's not a secret. Everyone's going to plainly know, oh, there's something going on right here. And the government will be accused of being communist North Korea. So they have to give a limitation of freedom right here. Okay, that's a matter of fact situation. There are, you got to realize this. We live in a country where you do have limitations of freedom. It's not complete slavery. There are, we do have freedom but it's confined within certain limitations. You gotta understand that fact. And for those of you who preach about freedom in America, that's not the case either. You gotta realize it's only a limited amount. That's a matter of fact. 